God, I got the crap all over me. <laughs> Looks like I've been rolling in the mud. I swear I haven't. I guess it's just the tractor and, and the hay piles. Good morning, folks. Jason Crestman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Today is March 16th. We're sitting at about 48 degrees and heading for the low 60s today. Seems kind of crazy for March, but it's how it's been the last few weeks. God, I'm a mess. I'm supposed to go to town after this. I might have to go home and change first. So, this week in beekeeping, not a whole lot going on still. Things are still kind of quiet. At least for me, anyway. I'm not one of them people that jumped the gun and broke boxes apart weeks ago. Still have yet to inspect my hives, to be honest with you. But this week, I noticed something at the beehives when I was watching the bees come in. Some red pollen. And that red pollen's from the purple dead nettles. Earlier this week, I was working in the corral here at the farm, and I noticed um, a purple dead nettle popping up. And uh, I took a picture of it just to share with you people that probably didn't know what it looks like. So here's what it looks like from a distance, and here's what it looks like close up. Now one of the most common places I see this is in croplands. Um, areas like soybean fields and cornfields before they've been planted. Early, early spring, be driving along and you'll look across those fields and you'll see a purple U going all the way across. Well, that's what it is, purple dead nettles. The bees work it like crazy when it comes in bloom, so be watching for that. So after seeing all this pollen coming into the hives the other day, I got to thinking, you know, it probably is safe to go ahead and add a pollen patty if you're uh, intrigued to do so. Just know that when you add a pollen patty to your colony, you're gonna greatly increase brood production and your workload. Why do I say your workload? Because as brood production increases, as they start to raise more baby bees, the queen's gonna need room to keep up that laying pattern. So with the bees bringing in the little bit of nectar and pollen that's available now, and the queen starting to lay, those cells in the honeycomb are gonna fill up rather quickly. So just know if you add a pollen patty, your workload has increased. So if you're a person that doesn't have time to manage your colonies, or check in on your colonies, say every 10 days or so, I'd hold off a little bit before you add them pollen patties. Um, now, you might be wondering about switching boxes. Um, it's a common thing that beekeepers do in the spring. They take the box on the top of the hive and they put it at the bottom, move the bottom one to the top. And the reason for this is, as we go from fall to winter and the cluster starts in the bottom box, over winter, they work their way up and to the top box. Now, one thing that bees are not good at is going back down. They would rather move up than down. So by switching the boxes, you put the queen in the bottom box, only allowing room to move up. I would hold off on this for a little bit longer, unless you're seeing a lot warmer weather than what we're having. Um, we've been flirting with the 60s and the 70s quite a bit here recently. It's the morning temperatures that have me concerned because we're flirting with the 30s, the high 20s. So I think I would hold off a little bit on switching the boxes around, uh, maybe a week or two. Let it get closer to the end of March. I'd feel a lot safer um, rotating the boxes at that point. Um, so with that said, maybe it's best to hold off another week or so before you add your pollen patty. You can go in there and you can switch the boxes around, put your pollen patty on, and then you know that the queen's gonna move up and have plenty of room, and that could save a little bit of your workload. Maybe. You know, bees are kind of unpredictable. So it's kind of a roll of the dice, um, but by making sure you have time to inspect every 10 days or so, you should be fine. So this morning I'm up here, just got done feeding the cows, as you can see. They look rather content. I got some yearling calves, like that white tag one right there that was just looking at us. Um, I'm getting ready to wean. Actually, I think there's, uh, what was it, 24 or something? Something like that. And then I'll have another group of younger calves to do later in the year. So, I don't know. I enjoy being up here with the cows, especially on these sunny mornings. 
kind of enjoyable just to kick back for a minute and watch them enjoy their breakfast enjoy the birds singing the sunshine the trees are blooming spring is in the air folks and it's exciting that's really about all I got to, to share with you today but I did want to take a minute and thank the people that came over and joined beekeeping blueprint beekeeping blueprint is a community I started a few months ago and the advantages to joining beekeeping blueprint over YouTube is that you as the viewer um, or the subscriber whichever way you want to look at it the follower um, you can come over to beekeeping blueprint and for less than a cup of coffee using my discount code it's a one-time lifetime membership fee so you'll pay this less than a cup of coffee fee one time and you're a lifetime member and then as you come over there as as questions and different situations arise with you and your bees and you want to share or maybe ask questions you can do that over on beekeeping blueprint you can share video you can share pictures and uh, we're able to reply offer advice and i think that's going to be very very helpful to a lot of the new beekeepers but this community is not just geared to getting a bunch of new beekeepers over there i would also like to encourage some of the more advanced beekeepers the people that's been keeping bees for a few years to come over and join you see because there's times i'm up here working with these cows somebody posts a question and they might be waiting for the answer so they can go work their bees so it's these more experienced beekeepers that i'm going to have to fall back on um, to help them out and i think that could be a great thing i think the more beekeepers we get in there helping each other out and, and growing this community, the stronger and better it's going to be. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think it's it's rather great so and exciting. So please go over, check out Beekeeping Blueprint. Um, take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us about your bees, when you got into bees. Um, yeah, I encourage all of that, folks. So anyway, Beekeeping Blueprint, check that out. Be watching for the purple dead nettles and the red pollen coming into your hives. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, um, this would be a good time to do so. Make sure you click that little bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. And uh, have a great week, folks. We'll see you back here next Sunday. Thanks for watching. JC's Bees.